Welcome to Product One's technical web series. Today we are looking at mechanism design option and Creo Simulate. So we are continuing where we left off last week. Last week, if you remember, we did cover mechanism design and mechanism design option. So we did showcase uh, last week how to do the following how to add the mechanism connection and even how to add things like your springs, your dampers, and even uh, certain measures. So what I have here is a push rod suspension of a, a dragster or a race car. So how I've actually defined this, I've actually allocated the spring stiffness of course, I even went as far as doing the following. For each and every connection, there is a measure. So I've created the measure where I'm measuring the reaction force. So this is what I'm interested in, in this particular region here. And then what I also do, as well as that I'm collecting reaction forces here and reaction forces there. So those are the critical areas that I'm interested in. So. If I were to go and play this uh, mechanism analysis, this is essentially how I get what I get. So I'm having here yeah, the car going around, it's turning, and as you can see there, the push rod is also uh, going up, it compresses the spring, and all of this is possible with mechanism design. And this design study, though, it's the mechanism design option. Okay, so why am I showing you this? Is that you can take these reaction forces, put them in this component, and take that into structural analysis. So just to show you what is happening with uh, all those reaction forces, I can show a graphical representation of that. So these are all the reaction forces, and of course they are color-coded there at the bottom. And what I'm going to do, which is very, very uh, uh, powerful, is that I can also showcase the arrows of those reaction forces. I can show the magnitude as it moves across, and I can also show uh, the name of each reaction force. So let me just do that. So I can even tweak the size of the arrows if I don't want them to be too big uh, or I want them to be maybe let's say 50% or even 70% because they tend to clutter the screen. All right, so this is basically what I have here. If I play this, this is essentially how the design actually uh, will react. Now, what is of interest to us is that as you see this going, particularly at 2.5 seconds, that is the timestamp there. This is where all the forces would have actually reached uh, maximum. So how I would like to analyze that particular point and how do you do that in Creo parametric and mechanisms, this is how you go about it. You tell the software that, you know what, how about you use this in Creo Simulate? So I'm going to select this component here and I'm going to pick uh, this assembly and I'm actually interested in 2.5 timestamp. I will remove everything else and just leave the reaction forces that we actually spoke about. And you can even see these if, if you like just to verify and that's very powerful. Now, if I say, okay, it has taken all those reaction forces and placed them in this component. So now let's go to, to that part. So this is the component concerned. And if I take this, for an example, into my Creo Simulate. Creo Simulate is our structural and thermal analysis. We are going to have a session that's dedicated just purely to Creo Simulate. And this is basically what I have. I already assigned the material there uh, and all I have to do now is that I'm going to take the assignment of this load, instead of it being on a, a point, I'm going to select this surface here, alright? So that's basically what I'm having now. 
I'm going to take out all of those forces and assign on that surface. And last but not least, this one as well. I'm going to assign that onto this surface. And that's just about it. And how do you do this analysis is that I'm going to say create a basic static analysis, but because I'm interested in how that part achieves equilibrium and then comes back as a result of those uh, forces, I'm going to say inertia relief. And I'm just ready to run my analysis. So if I'm running this analysis, you can also see what's happening to it. And it's actually finished now. So I can showcase the deformed state. Of course, I can exaggerate that. I can animate this. And just like that, I get to see that this component will experience 44 megapascals as a result of those reaction forces. All right. So this is all for this week. If you like the video, please leave your comments at the bottom. Don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, thank you very much.